But loving the Seventh Day Adventist Church, this is a, a very urgent, urgent message. A very urgent, urgent message regarding Galatians chapter 3. Again, that's Galatians chapter 3 now. I took a class here at Oakwood University years ago called Seventh Day Adventist Theology. Seventh Day Adventist Theology. Um, and in that class, I'm not going to mention the name of the teacher of the class, but um, you read from a scripture from Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Let me read it to you right quick, please. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth before whose eye Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit of, by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and work of miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. Now, beloved in the seventh day Adventist church, this teacher taught us that we don't have to obey God's law to be saved. All we have to do is have faith. And what Christ has done on the cross for our sins and we're saved. And that, that faith and what Christ has done on the cross for our sins saves us. Not our obedience. Now I disagree with the teacher on that standpoint. And you know, I believe we're saved by faith through grace alone with righteous obedience. Because James says faith without works is dead. And so he was saying that. You know, we're no longer under law, we're under grace. That means that we're no longer obligated to keep God's law. No, that actually means we're no longer under the condemnation of a law, but under grace. We still have to keep God's law, beloved, in the Seventh-day Adventist church to be saved. Obedience is required for salvation, beloved. Not just having faith in what Christ has done for us alone. It's also obedience, beloved. Because faith without works is dead. And be you do as the word, and not hear his own deceiving yourself. That's what James states. Shut the, shut the Bible from a systematic approach, holistically. Not just from an um, exegetical or expository method. You have to shut the Bible holistically. And so, look what Sister Wyatt says here in Acts of the Apostles, page 386. She states, The men who had corrupted, attempted to lead the Galatians from their belief in the gospel were hypocrites. Unholy in the heart and corrupt in life. The religion was made up of a round of ceremonies, through the performance of which may respected, um, expected to gain the favor of God. They had no desire for a gospel that called for obedience to the word. See what Sister White says? She says scripture means obedience to the word. Not um, the ceremonial law, which this law actually refers to of circumcision. But obedience to God's law, his Ten Commandments, his moral law. And also faith in Christ who was done on the cross for our sins, beloved. That is what these scriptures actually mean. So we're no longer under the condemnation of the law, beloved. But we're under grace, beloved. And so because we're under grace, we're not condemned when we make mistakes and simply backslide in the sin at times. But at the same time, we're obligated to keep God's Ten Commandments law, beloved, in the Adventist church. And, um... Um... We're not in a state where we say the new theology, once saved, always saved, and no victory over sin, beloved. That's the kind of theology that's being taught in our schools today at Oakwood, Andrews, and the Southern. We need a true doctrine in these days. The doctrine that says we can't overcome sin, we must obey God's law, and we're saved by grace through faith alone. God bless you, Mary, not the beloved.